Hello there, hello, hello. I uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, hopefully it works out okay. Um, this is the one I started doing the other day. I started filming uh, just that Venice scene that I did you know, recently, just a stereotypical cliche Venice thing. And I started doing it and my daughter decided to finish it and I'll put the photo here so you can see. Hmm. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. So, um, we'll try again. She's at school today, or daycare, so she can't come and stuff it up. That's all right. Um, yeah, as I say, stereotypical Venice scene. I just want to show you a different approach to it, maybe. Still with strong light. Um, I normally, you know, normally your, your cliche Venice stuff is bright, sparkly things and lots of detail and intricate work. And yeah, don't worry about all that. Let's just focus on some strong light, some tone, and most importantly, just getting a vibe, getting an atmosphere. Um, I'm going to start by turning it upside down. I'll do something pretty funky with the sky, if it'll allow. And I'm just gonna change the angle over here so you can see my palette. I hope that's beneficial. Um, this is like the, uh, almost the horizon, yeah, that's cool, that'll work. Alright, so I'm going to go in with some darkness right there, I want some dark, mix up a bit of a purple, all sorts of rubbish that's around the palette, that's good, grey purpley sort of vibe. Uh, yeah, that'll do. That kind of thing is good. Yeah, I'm just, you see, I'm just going across. I don't sort of care about precision here. This is the first wash, and this is our sort of fun stuff. You know? It's good, good fun stage, this one. I just want to throw in a little bit more. I want to get a bit purpler. Bit purplier. A bit bluer. There you go, that's probably a bit nicer. Some purple. And you can see that I'm just slapping it on. Slapping it on, moving quickly. And bring that down a bit. And. Now I'm going to bring in the yellowy orangey sort of stuff, complementary colours. And this way we'll get some nice glow, nice warmth. My palette is all schminky paint, uh, with the exception of a lavender, which is over there, which is a Holbein colour. Um, and I just can't live without it, but uh, if Schminky made it, I'd use it because they're always great quality. Yeah, just turn that over, let it run, do its thing. It'll fade off a lot. It's very bright because it's so fresh, but um, over here, Just gonna go in a tiny bit, tiny bit of turquoise. So I want the water to be fairly bright. Yeah. But we also want a little bit of light left there for the buildings and such. So that's cool. On this side, I like that glow coming through because I'm, I'm going to sort of reverse the usual scenario here. Kind of going to, kind of going to go warm in the background as far as, you know, when you use cool colors, you normally use cool colors in the distance because they recede, all that kind of stuff, which is all true and good. Um, but, I just wanted to change it up a little bit and see if I could uh, 
do some warmth in the background and some nice uh, cool stuff here uh, instead of the other way around. Well, that's all exciting. So let's just keep pushing this warmth down. And I will just get a bit stronger as it comes towards us. Now I do have that plan in my head of having a nice cool shadow across the across here. So that's why I'm going warm down this way as well. So you can see how quick your brush strikes. Let your brush dance. Let it let it do its thing. You know, I'd probably use Michael Jackson as a reference, but that might not be so good. Um, who's a dancer that hasn't actually fallen foul of the law? Uh, I don't know. Fred Astaire, who knows? Someone. There you go. And it's kind of all we want to do at this stage as far as uh, um, getting the underneath washes down. Now, I'm just going to dry this while I've got it because I'm doing this all in one go, this painting. One go hair dryer. I'll keep it all in so we uh, we get the, the gist of when we're drying and when we're not. Okay, all right, so dried pretty thoroughly. Yeah, I wanted, uh, wanted to get this bit really dry because we're gonna have that nice and crisp and, and we'll be right. So you notice I'm not going back into the water all the time. I'm just using whatever moisture is around in the palette because when you, when you go back into the water all the time in and out of the water uh, you end up just diluting everything and you, you get your washes end up just becoming really insipid and yeah, you don't want that just just when you can search for little bits of moisture and the, if it's tinted with a certain color, then cool, because chances are you probably use that in your painting already, and it's gonna have some nice, you know, nice harmony with everything else that's going on. So, yeah, that looks about right. So once again, try not to color in. We're just, I wanna keep this fairly solid. I don't really want detail or anything like that, but, um, Domes and spires are a pain in the ass to paint. Pain to get right as far as the drawing goes. They're just a pain. But you just do them quickly and it's over. And chances are if you do it quickly, it's uh, gonna look better anyway. So always just go back, have a look, squint your eyes, make sure it's reading okay. Something like that. And we also, I'm just gonna put a different, change the tone up a tiny bit here and there. Yeah, go it loose. Loosey goosey is best. Right. The rooftops, you know, do them really carefully, just like this. See how careful I'm being. So again, nice to have a pointy brush, just for this sort of thing. Keep it impressionistic. Don't spell everything out. You know, we're just, this is a background. Don't get bogged down in it. I think there's a dome or something there. It's Venice, so of course it will be. Um, but, you know, just keep it impressionistic. That's what I, that's my kind of art, that sort of stuff, where you, the viewer has to fill in a few of the blanks themselves, or ourselves. You know? Don't have to spell it all out. And we're not here to copy. Now, it's a bit of a deeper philosophical argument, I suppose, but we're not here to copy what's there. We're, we're, we're trying to get an impression of the vibe of the place, the atmosphere, the mood, the, the temperature, the, the weather, any, any, all that sort of stuff. 
we don't, we don't, we don't have to get a word. We don't have to see every bloody window. All that the windows are there. If you want to, if you want one of those, take a camera, take yourself a nice couple of photos, and you'll have a, you'll have a good little snapshot of the area. But we're not doing that. We're painting. We're creating some art. So leave your camera at home. Use the uh, artistic side of your brain, which is what we're, we're doing, we're painting, so hopefully that's coming into play. And get an impression of something, rather than, rather than having it hammered down our throats. We just leave an idea and a vibe. And right now I'm thinking, that's looking okay. It's looking pretty good. It's doing, the, doing its work. It's what we want. So, that's all cool and you can see all the dry brush, just that impression of the building in the background. We've got the, the little bank on the other side as well. And, um, and that turquoise is really gonna pop out once we fill it all in. So with this side of things, I'm going to get started on here. Now, as I say before, I'm gonna kind of do it sort of nice and cool, sort of almost greeny. Now, I do have phthalo green in my palette for this sort of purpose. It's usually, I usually use it as a good underneath kind of thing um, and for mixing nice quality darks. But uh, we're gonna kind of hero it a little bit here and see if we can make it work without being too gaudy. Um, okay, now we do this. All right, let's do this way. Let's just go straight down. Wait, I know that looks crazy right now. Don't stress. So I'm deliberately keeping all these dry brush strokes in. That's what I want. So I want some nice light. Some nice impressionistic kind of vibes. Now, this is just an underneath wash, so don't panic too much. So yeah, it's a crazy color, but it's really cool. And you'll see what I mean. You'll see how where it goes from here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna paint the back ends, or well, the inside, the dark parts of the of the little uh, arches first. And it's just going to give us something to work with on our smaller brush now. I'm going to go darker now with some blues. Now that I've got that, got that uh, green going on, I'm just going to embellish that a little bit with some some blue stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll mess all this up so it's not so neat and tidy and nice and pretty and all that sort of stuff so we'll, we'll make it work so right here same again just with that blue that I've mixed up straight down because ultimately there's a whole bunch of there's more more arches and columns and all that sort of stuff up here as well um, but kind of don't care about that I, I just want I just want a nice, uh, nice impression of what we're looking at. So, getting some, just water from the water jar, and I'm just bringing some things down, just so we get some nice soft edges. Kind of work in there. Let's just get that a bit darker. There you go. It's doing its thing, that's fine. Now, some good stuff here. What we want to do is just uh, get that there. Just making sure, keeping an eye on everything. Now, I'm going to go in with some 
warm colour over the top, just like in for little accents and, and things. And uh, that should work for me. If you've got, if you're watching this and you've ever got questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to to ask. Just uh, ask away in the comments. Send me an email, pictures, Facebook, whatever you want. Just uh, I'll help you if I can. Okay. Once again, we're just I'm just trying to get a feel for everything. Yeah, it's getting there. And because you're using a colour, like this colour on its own, it's a mixture of red and bloody the maroon, maroon brown that I use as a burnt sienna kind of substitute, nicer burnt sienna. Um, because you're using that on top of the green and the blue, it's giving, us, giving you a really nice nice option. Now you can see where I'm holding the brush as well. I'm holding the brush back a fair way in my hand, or well, most of the handle, um, because I want I want some nice loose impressionistic marks. I don't want things to be too strong or too accurate. So we'll go back in and working all wet in wet you know, it's going to give us some nice bleeding and nice soft effects as well. Yeah, we will put the ones in the background later on, that's all fine. couple of impressionistic dry brush marks there to give something else. Now, it's a bit light there, it's okay. What I'll do is just get a bit of bleeding action going. Good old palette knife comes in handy for this sort of thing. Scratch back. It's a, it's a good good tool to have. I find it's really easy to do too much of it. And I think your painting suffers when you do. But for things like this, where you're just giving an impression, it can be really good to help, uh, help with just creating those lines and perspective lines and all that sort of stuff. So give it a go, but uh, just be careful with it. Now this might look like a bit of a dog's breakfast at the moment, but uh, trust me, it'll work out. It's all good. Oh, looking good. All right. Kill that edge a bit, get a bit, bit of an outline, which we don't want. Now, just while I've got it all here, I'm going to put in the background arches that are behind everything, and it's just a, it's a quick impression. And it just helps us know that there's some other stuff going on behind us, which is great. Yeah, cool. That's all right, cool, doing its thing. 
All right, so that's all gonna dry, which is cool. Now, just while it's still a little bit damp, I'm just going to get go back in a couple of bits up here and yeah. Yep, back away from it. That's looking all right. Cool. Nice and impressionistic. It's good. All right, so here we go. Notice I'm uh, keeping my brushes, the main brushes that I'm using, I'm keeping them in my hands all the time. Um, so I've got, generally speaking, obviously they're different shapes. I've got a little, uh, here we go, you can see it contrasted. It's a number four Montmartre. <laughs> five dollar brush um synthetic squirrel synthetic something um nice little mop holds lots of water it's cool and i've got a, a little um white well used to be pointy um tack one and i just keep that one with thicker paint that one with the washes and sort of seems to work now with figures i'm just gonna wet this one here which is the major figure just gonna wet that the dress area down just a little bit I'll stop that from running there because I wanna I wanna get some colour into that and give it this sort of coloured dress that kind of thing and I'm gonna give it a Better give her a face. Faces are always helpful. Um, so, oh, she looks like she's just standing there, so we better give her something else to do. Yeah. It's nice and sort of soft. It's still impressionistic, but it's soft. And the rest, we, we've got to cut, take care of our tones. A little bit more silhouettes, more gestural. It's all just... Yeah, she's on her way somewhere. These guys in the back are... Can add a bit of colour onto them later. I just want to get the get them established. They're having a chat to each other there. Probably talking about how good the fishing was or some shot. That there, so I'm just gonna paint in that while I've got them the right sort of colour, these little dock areas that are kind of cool. Lots of dry brush marks. I'm not going back and looking at the reference photo or anything, I'm just wanting to get some nice marks. It just separates that, it just forms that uh, barrier between the water and the, and the foreground, you know, so you don't want to get too bogged down in detail. Now we'll just use that one a little bit of something there. There, all right. Now across the other side, really, really light. Just so, and they're just little marks, and I'm not painting anything. I'm not out there with the intention of, oh, that's a boat or whatever. It's a uh, 
the tiny little marks that just indicate that there's something there, that's all. Okay, cool. Now, just while this is still a bit... Uh, dry here, I'm just putting a few of these directional kind of lines in. Now, you see this all the time, and it's it's not a trick, it's not really a trick, it serves a purpose, it gives you that lead in and that bit of depth, and looks really nice once all the shadows and everything are across. Um, so, yep, cool. We can go ahead and do this uh, pole now. Uh, fairly dry brush for this. You know, neutral tint, bit of blue, you know, that's ultra tiny bit of burnt sienna or maroon brown as I've got, which is uh, part of my palette, which I love it. It's like burnt sienna, but it's just nicer and crisper. It just seems, seems good. I like it. Now, once again, not slavishly copying. We want the vibe of a light pole. Okay, so don't stress, don't go back looking at your bloody reference every 10 seconds. You know, it's a it's an old iron light pole. Don't worry about it. Alright, so we do this one. Look at that, just straight, just little marks. Nothing nothing big. Alright, so it's there. It's almost straight. Good. And I've got a few little embellishments that I don't know where they are or where they come from, but they're just part of the light. And and that does the trick right there. That's it. That's all you kind of need. Just bring that bit across a little. Straighten that up. There we go. So that light's there. All looking good. We're getting there. So at this point, I will dry it off and then I'll come back do the shadows and tidy it up and we'll be right to go. Okay, so we've dried all that off and it's uh, it's going all right. So what I wanna do, I wanna get these shadows in as quick as I can, as freshly as I can. Um, I'll probably spray a bit of water here and there just so I get some nice soft edges sometimes. But I want this to be a fairly cool, cool bit of shadowing. I am putting a tiny bit of that phthalo green in too, so hopefully that shines through a bit for us. And uh, it'll reflect nicely from these. Um, shadows aren't all the same color, so don't be frightened to put something in and then, um, then muck around with it and put some other stuff going. So this will all look really drastic, so don't stress. We're just sort of cutting around our lady a bit because we want her to maintain her luminosity. I'm gonna go down that way, that angle I reckon. Dry brush is a good, a dry brush is good for creating little bits of, little pockets of light coming through, which is what we're aiming for here. So we want it to be fairly solid and then not so solid. Join that shadow in. Okay, and also, Remember they, as they get sort of further away from you, they get a little bit lighter in tone. So. The light's coming around that way. So yeah, that's looking okay. I just want to darken it up over this way a bit. Strengthen it. 
and I like the lady having a bit of shadow on that side. That's right. I don't want to lose her freshness. Her freshness looks good. It's looking okay there. Now what I want to do is put some dry brush marks and just finishing off. I just want to finish some stuff off here. Um, first thing I will do though is just grab a bit of water in the hands and flick a bit around. Just while that shadow is still wet to break it up. As you can see I'm just spraying the water bottle into my hand, bang bang. Right. Pretty dry brush. And we want just want to put a couple of little lines here and there. brush is always better for this kind of thing because it uh, gives you those broken edges and it's it's more artistic and it's more impressionistic. Because again we're not spelling everything out. A bit of a splash. If you're getting bogged down in an area and you're not sure just give it a bit of a splash with some paint or just with water whatever you want but it, uh, it helps. Okay, that's cool. I'm just want to put her bag down there a bit. She's right. Red is always good. Now, at this point, I'm going to start the process of some highlights. A few little important spots in this particular piece that we want to pay attention to. As the usual, you know, shoulders and heads of the figures, but there's the lights in the lamppost and I want to put a couple here just to hopefully bring a bit to life, not much. That's all right, it's cool, it's working. All right. It's capturing light from everywhere, that's good. Good thing about Venice is the light bounces around so much because it reflects off water and buildings and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you can be pretty liberal with it.
Okay. Yeah. Getting there, we're almost done. I think we've got one more little step to take. And we'll be right. Oh. Well, that's looking good. All right, just gonna dry this off quickly. So, a couple of tiny little things I want to do, which are almost inconsequential, but I reckon it'll add something. These are just washed off a bit, these lines. So, I just want to bring them in a bit. Yep, I think that works. And also with the same dark, wouldn't be Venice without a whole bunch of pigeons everywhere, absolutely everywhere. On the ground. So there's pigeon, boom, pigeon. Obviously it's a good way to get rid of splashes and things like that that might have landed in your sky, but um, paint them very loosely, don't, like, you know, dot and a dash, none of, none of this. Ooh, there's a birdie. Nah, amateur, amateur hour of that stuff. And it's a bit too clean. Grab a bit of this lavender color that I love. Splash a bit, not much. There we go, there's a bit better. A little bit. We'll be right. Now, I'm just gonna take the tape off. And I reckon we will right. read pretty well. Taking the tape off's really good um, because it's not just a flashy finish and all that you get a little frame but it really does help when you've got when you've got paintings that have got busy edges you know like this stuff you can kind of lose the perspective but or not literally the perspective you can kind of lose the the vibe of the picture um, so I do like to just to take that off and have a look but um, It'll settle down a bit more when it dries, uh, but I hope you liked that. Um, please like and subscribe and share and all that kind of stuff. There's some exciting things coming up, so I hope you enjoyed this demo. Cheers, guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.